Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to do the days effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. What this really is, is just sort of an effect that you might throw into a scene where an actor or actress gets like hit on the head or poisoned or something. And as they're walking, you're getting like this first hand view of what it looks like to them. And it's usually portrayed as something like really, really bright, really echoey, um, sort of, you know, really strong colors and the highlights are blown out. And you get this sort of effect right here. So if we go ahead and pump this up to full screen, you can see that it's sort of this echoey effect and it's a little choppy and we have like these echoes and it's really just sort of disorienting. And so you kind of throw this maybe two seconds of this into a piece of footage just to give a quick show to the audience what this person is seeing. Instead of just having them stumble around the whole time, you can cut this in and actually show them, you know, sort of what they're they're seeing. So let's get started on this effect. What I'm just going to do is go ahead and delete this out of here. And we're going to redrag this back into the footage. So 479 right here. Um, keep existing settings. And so basically what we have is this normal piece of footage right here. Really kind of smooth, a little handheld shake, but nothing too extreme, just walking through the temple gates. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the effects, and then we're going to search for something called Echo. And it's going to be under Time. And actually, two effects. We're going to use both the effects under Time, but we'll get to the next one in a second. So we're going to go into Echo, and then what we want to do is we want to go down here, and we want to create three or so Echoes. And you see nothing much has changed. We're going to then bring the time up to about 0.16 seconds. So point 0.1, we'll go point 0.15 right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to create three different echoes. But whenever you create three pieces of footage on top of each other, you're going to get really, really bright. So we want this decay to go down a little bit so that the echoes kind of decay off a little bit. And then we kind of want to want to switch this to screen. And now you'll see that we have this echo effect happening without those extremely overblown highlights. And just enough that it's starting to get a little disorienting. So you see there's just a little echo so that the edges aren't crisp anymore. There's like, you can't really tell, um, you know, it's like time is kind of being warped in your mind and things are going together because it's working slowly, it's been poisoned, it's been hit in the head, something like that. So we have this echo effect going right here. It's looking pretty good and we didn't blow out the highlights by just reducing the, this, turning on screen, making the echo time greater. So now we have this effect in there. We are then going to just go delete the echo, but we're gonna go into effects. We're gonna go down to time and we're going to go into posterize time right here. And we're gonna drop this on the footage. And this is sort of a stylistic choice. You can add this if you want to or not, but basically what this is, is just gonna convert it into a lower frame rate. So instead of the smooth 24 frames a second that we've been seeing the whole movie or the whole video, we're going to drop it into a lower frame. So even something just like 19 or 18 frames a second, it's going to start making it choppy. And just to show you what this is doing, if I made this two frames a second, it's, it's only going to change twice every second. So you get this really, really choppy one, which actually could work if this is how you wanted to portray this effect, but we still want a little bit of smoothness. So I'm gonna go actually do about 15 right here. And you'll see that it, it adds just a little bit of chop to the scene. And now it's already looking good. So the last thing we're gonna do is we just wanna edit the colors a little bit to make them look kind of how we want them to look. So we're going to go into the color panel right up here, the color workspace up here, we're gonna hit this, and it'll open up Lumetri. If you don't have these or you don't wanna do this, all you have to do is just search for the effect in the effects tab right here. You can search for Lumetri and drag it on and then just edit it from there. So once we get to here, we're gonna go up to Lumetri and we kinda of wanna just manipulate this until it kind of works for what we want. So I'm gonna boost up the contrast here, maybe blow out the highlights just a little bit more, kind of darken those blacks and the shadows some. And then let's go into the vignette and let's add a reverse vignette onto this. So the, like a normal vignette would be this way where you know it focuses, but we're kind of gonna add some white to the edges, make it look a little bit more off. And then we can we can add some color to this if we wanted. So, you know, we can go into the curves and we could manipulate this to make it, I don't know, maybe drop this down a little bit to make it a little bluer. Uh, sort of just kind of working around it until you get something that looks kind of weird, a little bit out of this world. And I have really no rhyme or reason to, of doing this. I'm just kind of moving it around trying to figure out something that looks cool. So now we got the sort of green effect going on. And that's kind of good for a poison. Um, is because for some reason poison is universally known as green. So if you add green to the shot, you can kind of hint at that there's poison happening. So right now this is sort of the effect kind of coming into character here. You can move these around, but this is really the, the base of it, the, the center of the effect. And now we have this choppy movement. 
we have the kind of the green hint going on and then the echoes happening, which all make it look very disorienting and sort of daze like you can go in and you can make things a little bit more extreme. Like for example, we could go into the highlights and we could really blow them out if we wanted to like that and maybe like even bump up the exposure if we really kind of wanted to accent that. And you sort of get this effect going and you can kind of continue this in After Effects if you want by blurring the highlights as well because getting a good blur in there is really, um, can really throw stuff off. So for example, if we go over here into the effects, so let's go out of here, let's go back into effects right here um, so that we have the effect panel over here. We're gonna go up here and let's search for um, a directional blur is kind of what I'm thinking of here. So if we can throw this on here and then go down into the direction, turn the blur on a little. We could actually kind of have this go up and back and up and back and sort of pulse through this. So for example, if we went to both of these, we move it to maybe a second end here, blur it up a little bit, what direction is heading? Well, we can even spin the blur, that'll make it even more disorienting. So we could go here, then we can move forward, turn on the blur, and then spin it. So we're gonna keep it spinning, and then come back down, remove the blur, put it back at the original. And now you have like this really, really sort of disorienting, this uh, this blur happening as well, which I think actually really works with this. I mean, the reason I chose directional is so that it's like all blurring one direction, and it doesn't just look like the camera's out of focus, it looks like something actually happening. But that is basically the effect um, from here. You can, you know, of course, add more effects to it and change it around the way you want, but this is really how I would go about making a sort of daze effect. That is it on this tutorial. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, or you want, you know, like suggestions for a future tutorial, throw those in the comment section below. If you wanna see more videos similar to this one, I make a video on Adobe related software, kind of focusing on Premiere Pro every other day. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time guys, see ya.